Let's explore role-based access control, often called RBAC. It is a method used in modern systems to manage user roles and their related permissions. In an RBAC system, permissions are associated with roles and users are assigned to these roles based on their job functions. This approach simplifies the management of access rights across many users. Here we have a visual representation of the basic components. Users are assigned to roles and roles are granted permissions. Let's understand the core ideas behind Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC. RBAC is a policy-neutral access control mechanism. This means it doesn't enforce a specific security policy, but provides the flexibility to implement various policies. In RBAC, permissions are assigned to roles, not directly to users. Users acquire permissions through their assigned roles. This makes managing access rights much easier especially in large organizations. Key components include users who need access, roles that represent job functions, permissions to perform operations, and sessions that link users to activated roles. Let's examine the different role-based access control, or RBAC models. The first model is Core RBAC, which is the foundation of all RBAC systems. It includes basic user role assignment, permission role assignment, and session management. Next is hierarchical RBAC, which extends core RBAC by adding role hierarchies. This model allows roles to inherit permissions from other roles, reflecting organizational structures. Senior roles automatically acquire the permissions of junior roles. Finally, we have constrained RBAC, which adds separation of duty constraints to prevent conflicts of interest. This includes static separation of duty, constraints on role assignments, and dynamic separation of duty, constraints on role activation. This model enhances security and ensures compliance. Now let's explore how to implement role-based access control, or RBAC. The implementation includes a series of steps. First, we define the system resources and operations that need to be protected. Next, identify the roles based on job functions within the organization. After this, we assign permissions to these roles. Once the roles are set up, assign users to the appropriate roles. Implement access control checks within the application code to enforce the RBAC policies. Regularly audit and review role assignments to ensure they remain accurate and effective. Here's an example of a basic RBAC implementation in JavaScript. This function checks if a user has access to a resource by verifying their roles and associated permissions. Let's review the typical database structure used for implementing role-based access control, or RBAC. This structure includes several tables. The user's table stores user information such as user ID, username, password, email, and active status. The roles table stores role information, including role ID, name, description, and parent role for hierarchical RBAC. The permissions table stores permission details like permission ID, resource, operation, and description. The user roles table links users to roles, recording the user ID, role ID, and grant date. The role permissions table links roles to permissions, storing the role ID and permission ID. Relations between these tables are one to many, ensuring that one user can have multiple roles and one role can have multiple permissions. Let's see the Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC, authorization flow. It is the process that determines whether a user can access a particular resource. The user attempts to access a protected resource, initiating the process. Authentication verifies the user's identity and retrieves their details. Role retrieval fetches all roles assigned to the authenticated user. The permission check verifies if the user's roles have the necessary permissions for the requested resource. Finally, the access decision grants or denies access based on the outcome of the permission check. This code shows an example of an Express JavaScript middleware that checks user access based on roles and permissions. If the user is not authorized, it returns a forbidden message. Let's explore the best practices for role-based access control, 
or RBAC. Key design principles include the principle of least privilege, granting only the minimum permissions needed for a user's job, role engineering, designing roles based on job functions and grouping related permissions, separation of duties, dividing critical operations among multiple roles, and implementing a role hierarchy to reflect the organizational structure. Key implementation practices include default deny, configuring systems to deny access by default, regular auditing, periodically reviewing role assignments, comprehensive logging, logging all access attempts and role rotation, implementing procedures for temporary role assignments. Now let's talk about the challenges of role-based access control, or RBAC, and ways to address them. One major challenge is role explosion, where the number of roles grows uncontrollably. Solution is to implement role hierarchies and use parameterized roles. Another challenge is the static nature of traditional RBAC, which does not easily adapt to dynamic environments. Solution is to extend RBAC with attribute based access control to incorporate contextual factors. Another challenge is administrative overhead, which is managing role assignments in large organizations can be labor intensive. The solution is to implement automated provisioning systems and self-service portals. Finally, privilege creep is when users accumulate excessive permissions over time. The solution is to conduct regular access reviews and implement time-bound roles. Now let's summarize the key points about role-based access control or RBAC. RBAC simplifies access management by assigning permissions to roles instead of individual users. The core components of RBAC are users, roles, permissions, and sessions. There are several RBAC models, including core, hierarchical, and constrained variants. The principle of least privilege is fundamental to secure RBAC implementation. And finally, regular auditing and role reviews are essential for maintaining security. For more in-depth information, resources like the NIST RBAC standard, the OWASP Access Control Cheat Sheet, open source RBAC frameworks, and role engineering methodologies can be helpful. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.